Brands don't usually advertise the end of a product line. We know the year and the month when the last VHS VCR was made because the format was a global phenomenon and lasted for 40 years until big screen TVs and digital streaming have finally made it obsolete. The world's last video cassette recorder will be manufactured this month. That's according to Japan's Funai Electric. The company claims to be the only VCR manufacturer left in the world. Camcorders, on the other hand, have always been more of a niche product. And because the original recording is supposed to be edited and then distributed, possibly on a different media, Camcorder formats have shorter lifespan. So which VHS camcorder was the last one? And who made it? JVC, the inventor of VHS, and Panasonic, its partner in crime, are the two main suspects. The last two Panasonic models seem to be PVL-354 and PVL-454, released in 2004 and available in the early 2005 from some major resellers like Adorama, and even in 2006 on Amazon. JVC advertised two VHS camcorders in 2005. In 2006, JVC still had VHS camcorders in its lineup. The only difference compared to 2005 models was a decorative element on the front, silver for 2005 and blue for 2006. The AXM were VHS only, while the SXM had Super VHS capability. After a quick search on eBay, it was either an SXM38 in rough condition with a non-working flip-out screen and a broken-off viewfinder for $21, or an SXM37 in great cosmetic condition for $22, including shipping. So here it is, the GR SXM37. It's a rather pedestrian machine, which is capable of Super VHS recording, and which has built-in time based corrector for stabilizing the picture during playback, but other than that, it records single-channel linear audio, has no input for an external microphone, no headphone output, no shoe, no elaborate manual controls. JVC incorporated bits and pieces from its digital camcorders, like the 1.6-inch CCD with 320,000 pixels and the tiny viewfinder. Even these components are the cheapest ones, like the viewfinder is black and white, the flip-out LCD is a puny 2.5-inch, and the zoom toggle is of the notoriously unreliable kind. On the top, there are buttons to control the tape deck. To eject the tape, you need to open the flip-out monitor first, then press and hold the eject button. The camcorder uses small VHS cassettes, known as VHS-C. The hub on the supply reel is the same size as on a full-size VHS cassette, while the take-up reel has a geared wheel. This setup allowed JVC to create a caddy for playing these compact VHS cassettes in a full-size VHS machine. Looking at the adapter from the back, with the metal plate removed, we can see the supply reel on the VHS-C cassette and the take-up reel on the adapter, which drives the take-up gear on the VHS-C cassette through an idler gear. Commonly, you could record up to half an hour on one cassette in SP mode. The recording time can be tripled by switching to EP mode. Cassettes can have standard VHS or Super VHS tape. For the first 10 years after Super VHS format was created, you needed SVHS tape to record in SVHS mode. In 1998, JVC introduced SVHS ET mode that allowed recording SVHS video onto a regular VHS tape. This camcorder is capable of recording in this mode, but to squeeze the last drop of quality from the aging format, you should use true SVHS tape. Most of the camcorder functions are available from the menu, which is invoked by pressing on the control wheel. Luckily, manual focus can be engaged with a dedicated button. The same button turns the built-in time-based corrector on or off during playback. The last VHS camcorder is hardly the best. With a tiny sensor, it's no good in low light, and the added sensor resolution doesn't result in a more detailed picture in good light. 
It can be used to shoot videos that have the unmistakable 1990s look thanks to the CCD sensor. It can also be useful as a playback deck for digitizing old videos thanks to Super VHS capability and a built-in time-based corrector. That is it. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.